Well, when I studied with my native elders, everything was done in circle. You always sat in circle. And it changes the energy, doesn't it? Yeah, and it helps us remember we're all in the journey together. And sometimes one of us comes forward to speak. And what's also really wonderful about circle is that it reminds us that we are a container and we are holding each other in consciousness. So we are spending more time listening, being present to what another is saying than we are to what we are thinking about and what we are saying, which is also the embodiment of sacred feminine consciousness. So circles are a fabulous way. Just forming a circle begins that sacred journey into sacred feminine awareness that lives inside of us all. Guys, too. Guys, too. Well, 1059. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay. Is this working? Do you need the microphone? It sounds for recording. Okay. All right. Greetings, everybody, for the 11 o'clock uh, session. And our first speaker is Misa Hopkins, who has been exploring the nature of the divine feminine in the native traditions. She's from Virginia, and I'm really happy to welcome her here. Thank you. And I'm so thrilled to be here, and I'm really thrilled that you're here and we're exploring together. And I'm really delighted to discover what magic opens because we chose to come into this space in this moment in time. Hmm. Just so that you know some of my orientation, I'm the guardian of a sacred path of the feminine that we approximate, approximate to be 1,000 to 2,000 years old. This path was put to sleep for about 100 to 150 years, about the same time that, and with all respect, I'm both Native and Caucasian, but that Caucasians began to come across the, the, uh, this continent was about the time that these teachings were submerged and kept quiet until the time was right. And that time is now, when my ancestors believed that we were ready to embrace sacred feminine consciousness as a part of our evolution into divinity, shall we say, or the way that my ancestors put it, into shedding the limited body to become the limitless self. So it was a great delight to me to discover that indeed, women had created a path to consciousness. In fact, they dedicated lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to continuing to add to their experiences and to open to what they believed would become the ultimate path for their daughters to experience their awakened selves. Men had a different pathway, women had their own, and then they came together in ceremonies. Today, we're just going to look at the sacred feminine nature to that approach. And the good news is, guys, that it really does work for men as well, because of course we all embody sacred feminine and sacred masculine consciousness, as I'm sure you know if you're here. So. Anybody here familiar with the concept of the dark night of the soul? <laughs> yeah, if you're here, probably. How about the shadow side? Oh yeah. How about, watch out for the dark side of the force, Luke. <laughs> okay, so we've associated darkness with hard, difficult emotions, the big struggle that's going to take me to my edge, possibly my death, and we've associated it with evil. But when I was in Egypt, 25, 30 years ago, somewhere in there, on the Nile River, that isn't the experience of darkness I had at all. And it shook my reality. There on the Nile for 24 hours, I was absolute darkness. I was still, I was almost motionless. There was this ebb, this flow. I could feel all of the potential for life. I could feel everything that had been created and that had the potential to be created. And it was absolutely gorgeous. 
It was love. It was that space in which I was held and I was holding all potential, or what the grandmothers, my ancestors, have since taught me, is the primordial womb of all life, from which all life comes, and we call it space. We know now that our bodies are comprised of more space than vibrational, mm, I want to say experiences, vibrational experiences that create the illusion of reality. We are more space. We are more stillness. And so the practices that my ancestors gave me was one that allowed me to go deep, 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 deep into the well of that space and get comfortable with it and discover what it was really all about. That it wasn't evil, that it wasn't the edge of death any more than it might be the edge of life because it's where all life is born and reborn. And it certainly wasn't a place of just bad negative emotions. What my ancestors discovered as they went deeper and deeper and deeper into this space, this primordial womb, and they said a prayer. So they were making discoveries and they were praying and looking and asking their questions. And one of the questions they asked was, how do we as women or today, how do we as men and women evolve spiritually while going about all of the daily tasks that we need to do and the people we need to take care of? How do we do that? And so the women were taught to pay attention to their bodies and to hold life in the same way that they would hold a newborn child coming in through their wombs. How do we hold that new life? and to hold their emotions as they were moving through these big transitions in their lives that we now know are hormonally stimulated, these huge transitions with big, powerful emotions seemingly out of control sometimes. How do we be with that? And how do we be in spiritual practice? And so what my ancestors learned over centuries of their evolution was that if they held their emotions in love, in compassion, in the same way that they would hold that child in their womb without expectation but with love, if they were willing to go into the darkness, that space, that primordial womb, in the same way that a new little one is coming into that dark, watery womb. That if we imitated, if we engaged in space the same way we engaged with our own mortal wombs, we would discover something about ourselves. We would discover that we in our limitless nature, seemingly limitless nature, could shed that limited experience to know our limitless selves. That's what my ancestors taught me. That's what I'm privileged to share with you today. And what I'd like to share with you is an experience in the holding the holding is what the women taught the young girls when they first started their menses and their emotions were raw. They taught them to hold those emotions in compassion and let the compassion do the work. What the girls soon discovered is that they could find a way to be in the ebb and flow of the emotions without making those emotions a definition of their lives without being the driving force of their lives. They could experience the richness of the emotions without attaching meaning to them or definition of the self. And that gave them freedom. So I've been teaching the holding now for 10 years or so. And we're seeing some amazing results, like a woman 
who did the holding every day for 90 days and just in holding her emotions and compassion and did 15 years of chronic genetic depression. Yeah. We're seeing more and more experiences that women are having and men as well, deeply empathic men, finding some new ways to be with those big roiling emotions that are allowing them to find greater peace in their lives and open their own consciousness in the process. Could you speak just a little louder, please? I could do that, yeah. Thank you for asking. So I'd like to take you into the experience of holding. Would that be all right with you? All right, now before we go in, as we move through the holding, as we come out the other side of being in this womb, we're going to allow the light of our own consciousness to also emerge, which the women knew as the sacred masculine. The light, the sound, the expression, as my ancestors called it. And if we were to go further, which we don't have time to do today, we would go into the dance with the sacred masculine and we would emerge in a rebirthing of the self energetically. That was the complete meditation that they did. One of many, many practices, but this is the core to it all. So I invite you to close your eyes. It's good to sit with feet flat on the floor and hands in an open or comfortable position, spine comfortable. And breathe into this moment, into the space that you are. The space between your thoughts. The space between your breaths. The space between the very cells of your body. as deeply into space as you wish to be in this moment. As you breathe into this space, allow yourself to remember a moment when you felt love. Any type of love from kindness to joy, passion, Compassion, romance, any flavor of love. Allow that love to anchor into your energetic womb, both women and men have an energetic womb and it anchors you to the primordial womb of all life from which all life comes. And expand in that awareness of love Allow yourself to feel held in this space. To be accepted as you are, as love. Completely accepted simply because you exist. Allow yourself to be aware of whatever feeling you are having in this moment. Happiness or contentment, sadness, anger, frustration, joy, any emotion at all is perfect. Simply allowing yourself to hold that emotion in compassion 
in this incredible ability we have to hold all of our emotions while feeling compassion at the same time. Go deeper into love than you have ever been before. Deeper into compassion and notice the feelings ebb and flow. Difficult feelings soften. Even dissipate. Pleasing feelings become stronger and expand. All held in love, all held in the womb of your acceptance. As a mother loves a child, all that that child has been, is, and will be. All accepted, all loved watching the ebb and flow of emotions. Growing quieter and quieter into deep, deep stillness. A new I am of your being begins to form as a symbol, a sound, a feeling, a knowingness in whatever way you experience divine consciousness. A new I am of your expression, born into the light of who you are, the sound of who you are becoming your potential giving birth. As light, the sound is expression. And let this I am walk with you now during this next moon cycle. And with the awareness of the absolute beauty of who you are and how very loved you truly are, we're going to bring ourselves out with three breaths. Big inhale. Exhale through your mouth. Blow yourself into your body. <sighs> Good, aware of the air around you. Next breath, big inhale. Exhale through your mouths. Good, good, feel where you are sitting, the chair, the floor. Next breath coming all the way back in the body, big inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Good, all the way back into the body. Make sure that you can feel your body and when you do, very gently open your eyes. You went very deep. <laughs> Thank you. It normally takes about 20 minutes just to do the holding, so that was a very quick version. But I thank you for coming with so much presence already to take us so deeply. All right. Do you have any questions or do you want to comment on what you experienced? We have about three more minutes. Yeah, you can learn more about this practice at sacredfeminineawakening.com. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Um, the feeling that came up for me was one that I have often, without really paying attention to it, of kind of wondering if I'm going to be able to do something correctly to have it work out. It's a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of fear, not bad, but I had never thought of bringing love and compassion to the feeling itself and to myself while I'm having that feeling. It's a very powerful experience. I'm so glad you shared that. You are I welcome. Always, I have never connected, you know, one, anyway, very powerful. I really appreciate Good. it. Good. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm grateful you shared it, for your own experience most of all, but the limits that come up when you go to the edge of your fear oh my god I don't think I could handle that or the thought comes up with the feeling attached to it if you hold the limit 
in compassion. This is what we do with the longer version of this. If you hold the limiting thought or feeling in compassion, it will dissipate very quickly. And so we find that when the women and men are doing this practice, if they are coming in with intense anxiety, they, uh, they often feel it resolve very quickly. Mm -hmm. I found that it was hard for me to get balance, but the feeling that I felt was a tremendous sadness and overwhelming sadness, mm -hmm. and I couldn't quite, they were out of balance, like there was, I couldn't get the love and compassion to kind of hold or match the sadness, it just wasn't. Good. Good, very, very good awareness. So that comes with a little more time and practice where we continue to go deeper into the love and deeper into the love and a form of love that resonates for you. Compassion is fairly universal, but for you it might even be a slight nuance of love. It, and most of all, your presence to the sadness does most of the work. Just being in silence with it is very, very powerful. Yes. I love the way you tied in um, being compassionate to emotions like a child because as children we have emotions and in the Western culture like you know my parents were proud of the fact I stopped crying at nine six months old and you know, as a psychotherapist I look at that and go oh my god no wonder I'm just like therapy <laughs> that's uh, right I love that, you know, holding the emotions like holding a child and just that permission and, and love Exactly. And as a therapist, you might be pleased to know I have therapists using this mm -hmm. to help get to those deep childhood wounds. You can get the karmic wounds. I mean, if you, if you want to be strategic with it, you can be. And we're seeing some really, really lovely releases in it. And it's so simple, isn't it? Because it is what mothers and dads do with our kids. Mm -hmm. And our emotions are our children, in a sense. To be um, specific about a particular experience, for example, maybe a memory from childhood that you want to work on, or a karmic memory that you have from a previous life, you could take those in, and you could work with that specific circumstance. And the layers of emotion that are underneath it, and there usually are three to four major layers before you get to the core, which is worthiness or your separation from the divine. Our time is up. <laughs> but I'll be out there. Thank you.